Good morning from day two of our MSC Maria Villa cruise staying in the Yacht Club. And what is one of the best things about staying in a Yacht Club suite? Why, the Nespresso maker, of course. On um, this morning, Gary was still sleeping, so I made myself a sneaky cup of coffee. But then, so as not to disturb him, I headed up to the Yacht Club lounge. And look at this spread. This is not the official breakfast. These are just little noshes you can have if you don't feel like going to breakfast. Today is a full sea day as we sail towards Florida. And we were invited to an early afternoon captain's soiree staff get together in the Yacht Club lounge. They had a bunch of hors d'oeuvre like snacks and treats laid out for everyone. They were serving drinks. There was live piano music playing. In case you were wondering, the Yacht Club can hold up to 300 passengers at capacity. I think we were a little over 200 on this sailing. Give a shout out for the berries. <laughs> the berry thing is an inside joke as once when Gary and I were sailing on Norwegian, we could not obtain a single berry on our entire cruise. It's good to know they at least have tons of berries in the yacht club. <laughs> We got to meet the Yacht Club staff, which I will talk about more in a future video, but I am convinced is the hardest working staff of any cruise ship we've ever been on. The captain spoke for like two minutes and then he left, no photo ops, nothing exciting. And after eating all of those treats, we meandered up to lunch because why not eat after you've just eaten? It's a cruise. This is the Yacht Club lunch menu. Check it out. This is the summer salad. You enjoying the summer salad, babe? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. I ended up getting the udon noodles for lunch, which tasted really good, but they weren't really udon noodles. They had more of a skinny noodle consistency. I got the sea bass. <laughs> good. Oh, good. It's good. good. Awesome. I didn't think it would be good. After lunch, I decided to check out the gym for a workout. Since I had to pass the pool area on my way, I took this footage to show you how crowded it was at about 1 p.m. on a sea day. And honestly, this isn't too crazy. You can see there's a couple chairs available near the pool. I guess it is still technically lunchtime, so maybe after this it got a little more wild. In order to use the gym on the ship, you have to sign a waiver and get a sticker on your room card. I really liked that the fitness center was located in the middle of the ship and not at the front or the back. That makes me so nauseous while working out. However, other than that, I have to say this was my least favorite gym of all time of any cruise I've ever been on. For the size of the ship, it simply wasn't big enough. They had enough treadmills, but they did not have enough weightlifting equipment. I mean, we're talking about a ship that can hold 6,000 people at maximum capacity, and the fitness center was just like one sliver. Also, the treadmills stopped your workout at 25 minutes. That was super annoying to me because I always try and use the gym later in the day when it's less busy. If I want to walk on the treadmill for an hour, I should be able to walk on the treadmill for an hour as long as no one else is waiting. And when you're stopped in the middle of your cardio workout and you have to reset everything, it kind of takes the motivation out of it. So did not appreciate that at all. Also, on my way back to the room, I noticed that two out of three pools were being drained due to accidents that had happened in them. So that's something that can happen when you're on a cruise with a lot of children. <laughs> What did we do? Wasn't great. 
we ordered a pizza and uh when is formal night for night and what do we get to eat on formal night lobster <laughs> and yet meanwhile here we are with a pizza one hour before we have dinner <laughs> gary says it's everything it's so good is it the best be honest because uh I think last time you said your favorite pizza was on Princess. What do you think this compared to Princess? This is better. It's better? It's better, yeah. Okay. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Mm. And And remind everyone, we're from New York City. It's so good. It's so good. A New Yorker says that this is the best mm. cruise ship pizza. Mm. There you go. Have you ever tried the pizza on MSC? Is it your favorite? Please let us know in the comments below. Getting ready for a formal night, and if I had known how lousy this hair dryer was, I would have given myself like three hours. No cruise ship hair dryers tend to suck, and this one was no exception. Definitely bring yourself an extra hair dryer on this cruise. And we are formal night ready. There is only one formal night on this week long cruise and it was on the second night. And I'm sorry, I have worn this outfit before. It's like my favorite outfit to wear on formal nights. I'm not being very individual. Gary wore his beloved Hawaii shirt for formal night. I feel like we both need new formal night clothes. Does anyone want to sponsor us? Bloomingdale's? Macy's, Nordstrom, I don't know. Let us know in the comments. Here is what the Yacht Club menu looks like on formal night. And they have my beloved escargot, but they refer to them as snails, which it's all the same, I'll take it. And of course they had lobster tails as well. For our first appetizer, we both got the steamed octopus carpaccio and we have never tried anything like this before. Octopus carpaccio. Yes. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is good. This is good. How do the MSC snails stand up? First of all, they're not called escargot. They're called snails. Verdict? Holy garlic. Okay, listen. Celebrities better. Really? But they're good. They're okay. better than the princess snails. Okay. This comes in second. The Royal Caribbean ones were really good too. Third. All right, you guys, I'm changing my review because there was like a puffiness about it. And at first I thought it was weird, but then I realized it's some sort of like super light cheese, which is really good. So now not only did I eat them all, but I'm fingering them. If you know, you know, I'm fingering <laughs> the rest. This is a fancy restaurant. She's dipping her fingers in there. No oh. shame. No shame. <laughs> and here's the coveted lobster tail. Now, hot lobster tail tip from an expert. They always offer to deshell it for you. Don't let them. They miss meat in the end of the tail. They might look at you like you're crazy, but you keep that shell and do it yourself. I got the royal chocolate cake for dessert. Anything dessert on this entire cruise was really spectacular. Berry sorbet. And what was the other sorbet? Mango. Mango sorbet. And they are delish. Are they really? They're good. Okay. I believe you. Oh my God, yeah. Oh yeah. Good. Gary had to get his obligatory film shot of me walking down the famous Swarovski crystal stairs. Each stair costs $10,000, at least according to Wikipedia, it does. I was able to manage because my heels weren't that big.
there was live piano music every single evening in the Yacht Club Lounge. Just fabulous. Uh, hello. Now, how was your sea day today? Was it nice, relaxing, yes or yes? Yeah, yeah very nice indeed, of course. And that was Ted, the cruise director, again. And tonight is the only MSC company cast show we saw in the main stage theater. They have other shows in the Carousel Theater, which we went to two of those. But this is unusual for us because, you know, we always see all the shows in the theater I could be incorrect, but I believe they offered three different review style shows total. This one's theme was travel. I think it was called Journey or something about Journey. It had the word Journey in the name. So since this is the only main stage production we saw, let's give it our full review right now. Now, in terms of this theater, the actual stage is huge. It is the biggest stage I have ever seen in a cruise ship. So not the biggest theater, but the biggest stage. But they only had a normal amount of performers. So like four dancers, four singers. I don't know. It, I didn't take a full count, but there couldn't have been more than 12 people in the show. Yet they had to fill this huge stage. So it always seemed kind of bare to me. Now, in the past, Gary and I have complained about low production value and lack of costumes. So as you can see, these costumes are pretty cute, but I want to point out something about this can-can number. Whoever the costume designer was went through all the effort of making these frilly, cute costumes, and then they were wearing biker shorts underneath. Where are the pantaloons? so much effort only to fall short. I also wanted to point out that the big LED screen in the back had a lot of areas that were not working. I zoomed in on this one, but there were lots of them all over the screen. It might be time to call in an electrician or something. I don't know. How was the singing? I felt like the music selection in this show was a little inappropriate for some of the singers' voices. This show had more of a legit kind of feel, and I got the sense that especially the women were more belters. Okay, well, how was the dancing, Lori? The dancing was great, but as a former dancer myself, I have to complain on behalf of the dancers. So there was this one feature dancer, this amazing woman right here. Everyone worked their butts off, but especially her they all had to do three shows in a night. That's too much. That is too much. Usually it's two shows in the evening and even that's a lot. Obviously as a passenger, I appreciate having all those showtime options, but as someone who used to do this, I just felt bad for the poor performers. I'm going to give the show a solid B, but I give that featured dancer an A++++. We could watch this ceiling show all night. It's a wonder we don't both have neck problems after this cruise. This completes day number two of our cruise and brings us into the third day, which is also the day we are docking at Port Canaveral, Florida. On this day, we both got a late start. I didn't have to make my coffee in the dark. And by the time we felt ready to start our day, it was lunchtime. So we tried the buffet area in the Yacht Club rather than go to a sit-down lunch. After the day before and eating all that pizza, escargot, lobster tails, I had a light salad for lunch, which the Yacht Club buffet is perfect for. They have lots of good salad options. 
And then I wasn't in the mood to even deal with the gym. So I just did a workout in our stateroom. And it is so nice having all this extra floor space for a little workout. After that, I wanted to watch our arrival to Port Canaveral. So I went to our balcony to read until we got there. But then they made an announcement that our new arrival time went from 1 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. So here's what happened. Do you remember all that fog from day one? If not, go back and watch our first video. Go back. Go on. Go watch it. Well, that fog held us up a bit. And then we would have gotten to Port Canaveral at 3. But then there was no place for us to dock until 4.30. And here's our deal. Our deal is we were never going to get off the ship in Port Canaveral. However... We were looking forward to an emptier ship so we could film a proper ship tour. But when I posted about this on TikTok, hold on, pause, we saw a submarine. Isn't that cool? We saw a freaking submarine on our way into Florida. Gary's Port Canaveral trip was made after this. Anyway, back to what I was saying. I posted about this on TikTok and I had some people that were on the cruise write in and be like, I lost $200 that I had spent on going to Disney World. I was only able to enjoy Disney for 20 minutes. So I'm going to use this as another PSA to remind you all. Number one, don't go to Disney when the ship is at Port Canaveral. It's just not a long enough day. It takes too long to get to Disney World. It's too expensive. Which also brings me to PSA number two. Get ship-sponsored excursions. Everyone that had gotten a ship excursion was refunded their full money because they were unable to do it because of the shortened hours. People are forever criticizing Gary and I for only purchasing excursions through the cruise ship. And this cruise especially really showed why it is a good idea to do it always, even though it costs a little more. Anyway, I said what I said. What are your thoughts on excursions? Do you love cruise ship sponsored excursions? Do they make you feel safe? Or do you prefer to spend less and get an outside excursion? Please let us know in the comments below. But just cut. Make sure we sit inside. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> We had the three specialty dining package on this cruise, and this is the first specialty restaurant we went to, The Butcher's Cut, which is the steakhouse on board. And just FYI, the three specialty restaurant dining package only includes the steakhouse, the Mexican restaurant, and the seafood restaurant. We were a little disappointed that we did not have the options of choosing the sushi restaurant or the teppanyaki restaurant. Also, both the steakhouse and the seafood restaurant had a dining experience menu within the full menu, and that's what you were allowed to order from. If you supplemented from anything else in the menu, you got 50% off. If you added something to the menu, you had to pay full price. So, of course, the higher end options were not included in what you got with the regular restaurant package options. I started with this nice hearts of palm salad and Gary got the bone marrow. Check that out. Gary, how is this bone marrow? Well, it comes with caramelized onions, the bone marrow, which is very flavorful. It's an interesting taste. I've never had before, but it's quite delicious, and uh, it's, it's, it's got salt, uh, which I added, uh, sea salt, uh, comes with, um, what's that green stuff? Chutney? No, um, I'm not being Chimichurri? A, like a jelly? Nope. Cilantro? I think that's it. You think that's cilantro? 
I think it's like a chimichurri. You may be right. Anyway, that looks... It's, I've never had it before. It's wonderful. And I'm putting it on a... Um, on a bacon uh, infused biscuit with cheese. Wow. This is really good. We did discover later it was chimichurri sauce. And then we both got the lamb for dinner. Each main dish came with a side and then all of those beautiful sauces. Well, we both got the lamb chops and uh, everything looks really good. I got Brussels sprouts, Gary got mac and cheese. And we have all these different sauces. This is chimichurri. That's a Bernays. One of them is like a mushroom one. And mm -hmm. what's the other one, babe? Uh, peppercorn or something? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Anyway, let me do the honors and take the first bite here. Lamb chops. Just good. Okay. <laughs> Let's see if the lava cake lies. Oh. Oh, oh man. It lavaed. It lavaed hard. That's good. On this evening, we saw our first show in the Carousel Theater. The show is called Houdini. The Carousel Theater does charge an extra fee to go see a show there, but it does include a single drink. But also, and this is new, it is included when you stay in the Yacht Club. So we got a $12 refund for our purchase, added to our account, not too shabby. And of course, once again, got to cut the line, got there early with our butler so we could claim our front row center seat. All right, already getting into the complaints. Complaint number one. No offense to this kid, he was amazing, super talented, but he basically did a full on show before the show. Like some sort of ambient music would have been great, even if he was playing a little softer, more as background music, but no, he was given a full on rock concert. Look at that, people were weaving their phone lights. Because you get a free drink with your ticket, and also because of the layout, these casual chairs with little cocktail tables in between, this would have been a perfect time to have some casual conversation with your next door neighbor. But no, that you couldn't. There was just loud rock concert music. Gary put on his noise cancellation headphones. And especially if this music wasn't really your jam, it was just kind of super annoying. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry because this guy was so talented. Like, it, it is nothing against him. It's just something that the ship did and it made no sense to me. I came to see an aerial show. I don't want to see a rock concert. Okay, finally, show time. Here is the show review none of you asked for, but you all are going to get because I am an aerialist. I teach beginning aerial silks at Body and Pole in New York City. So whenever there's an aerialist or aerial shows on the ship, it's always the thing I am most excited to see. And this show was really entertaining. I do think a cast member was out because there was really no Houdini in the show. And I don't know, I just got the vibe that it was missing someone, that maybe someone was out sick. I don't know. Do you know? Could you let me know in the comments below? Is there supposed to be an actual Houdini in the show Houdini? I don't think that guy was Houdini. He was more like a ringleader. Anyway, for me personally, this show was another example of, are these performers going to be okay? Are they going to be okay? So, whenever I see Ariel on a ship, it's usually one of three things. Number one, it's usually actual dancers that have no experience that are taught about 30 seconds of Ariel on a Spanish web or something, and they just have 30 seconds of something to do in the air within a 45-50 minute show. Number two, it's a professional aerialist that maybe does 
two seconds in the opening number, comes out in the middle of the show, does their full piece, and then comes out for two seconds in the end of the show. Or number three, it's an aerial couple that has created their own 30, 40 minute show where they can space out their own acts accordingly. But for this show, everyone was in the show like the entire time. And as an aerialist, I was concerned, like, when did they put their grip aid on? I don't know about you, if you're an aerialist, you're probably not, if you're watching a cruise video, but I need to put, like, 10 tons of chalk on before I get on a hoop, or in this person's case, a cube, or I need to let my hands marinate in a bucket of rosin before I hop on the aerial silks. There was no time for any of these performers to do that. They were literally working their butts off luckily they only had two shows a night not three but i think they had more evenings of performances also in the middle of this show something broke down so yeah they had to stop the show for five minutes in the middle and ironically they did it right before the straps act which scared the crap out of me because you guys straps is the most dangerous aerial apparatus it is the one that is most likely to break and i was just hoping that they didn't stop the show because the straps were broken luckily the straps guy lived and that completed day three of our cruise. Please hit the like and subscribe button with the notification button on so you can see the next part of our adventure, which will be a full ship tour. And then also coming soon, a full day on Ocean Key, their private island, which was amazing. You're not going to want to miss that. So definitely follow us. And until the next time, we want you to live your best cruise life. Bye-bye.